Okay, streaming now. Streaming now. Sent. And I'm going to streaming now. Re Gavin sent. Oof. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give people a second to get here, and then we shall talk about. Oh, my phone's blowing up like crazy. With uh, I can. What? What is Keith saying? Keith. You can, what? I just got the first ever text from Keith and it just says, I can. Okay, so I don't know what that means. Um, so this is breaking news. Um, hey guys. Uh, con oh! Okay, can I make that? Okay. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm sure you all heard Gavin. It, this. Um, oof. One second. I'm get, my phone's blowing up, but this is pertinent to the stream. Um, Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, as I, for those of you who watch my show on uh, Compound Media, um, Nightshade, which is Monday through Thursday at 11, I've been covering the stuff with Gavin and Gavin McIngus and all this other stuff recently. Yeah, beep, 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 beep. I'm, I'm a modern day Aaron Berg. Uh, earlier, very recently, The Blaze, which is Glenn Beck's operation, and CRTV, which is Mark Levin's operation, where Gavin moved his show, uh, when his show was on uh, Compound Media, it was called The Gavin McInnes Show, he moved it to CRTV and called it Get Off My Lawn. It's a very popular podcast. If you look at iTunes Top 200, I wonder if it's still there. Uh... When you when you when you look at um, comp, uh, iTunes top two hundred, it's in the top two hundred. It does very very good numbers. So I said earlier this week, I go look Michelle. As soon as they've merged, Michelle Malkin left, and Michelle Mal Malkin. I, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to mispronounce her name. I'm not positive. It's either M Malkin or Malkin, uh, double M, and I don't mean me. She left. It wasn't clear, um, and why was she left uh this could be completely unrelated i would bet money it's unrelated um she walked malkin okay thank you it's appreciated so i said look i don't think this bodes well for gavin and the thing i want to say is thank you so much. the thing i want to point out is there is a very um uh disturbing uh pattern in social media. So for example, if someone had said, we need to understand how Osama bin Laden thinks in order to stop Al Qaeda, people would be like, well, he's evil. What, what are you talking about? You're, why are you validating what he did? Like, no. You know, if you under, want to, I'm sure Eisenhower tried to understand how the Nazis thought. You try to understand how people think in order to defeat them. So whenever you are empathizing with another point of view, it's not validating it. It's just trying to understand it. So the point I made when you say when I said something like, I don't think this bodes well for Gavin, this I just really want to make clear, not that anyone accused me of this, to be fair, that it's not like, oh, I wish this happens or like, you know, when you say something, it almost implies you want to create into being. That's not the case. But I'm like, I this does not bode well for him, because I think what people need to understand is that what has happened <laughs> I got a funny text from Milo. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, sorry. Uh, th th my phone's blowing up. <laughs> Story of my life. Um, 
so what yeah, what people need to understand i can't repeat the text what people need to understand is yeah i i mean this what people need to understand i'm sorry i'm repeating myself but it's just my head is is spinning um i'm not a fan of morrissey at all the, the smiths are the most underrated overrated band of the 80s the most underrated band of the 80s is glenn beck what everyone needs to understand is for very many people Gavin has been made out to be the leader of a of a national skinhead gang. That's not the facts, that is the perception. So anything that's happening in regard to this area, what you need to understand and you could say it's not true, blah blah. blah truth does not matter here. What you need to understand is this is how for many people, especially in corporate America, he has been successfully painted as the leader of a skinhead gang. Now, when you take someone who's the leader of a skinhead gang and you hire him, that is going to put enormous pressure on advertisers, on the sponsors, on the company, on the co-workers. We saw recently they got rid of him from Facebook, including the, the, the page for his show, which is a top 200 iTunes podcast. They got rid of his page personally. They got rid of him from Instagram and anyone associated with the Proud Boys who are, and I'm sure they would say this themselves, doofuses. They, I mean, they are, it's a lot, the Proud Boys, it, for the most part, I see 90% part, 90% more, are far closer to Millhouse than they are to um, uh, Gigi Allen. Doesn't matter. It's been successfully created the perception that Gavin is the head of a national skinhead gang, right? So everyone who's here attacking Glenn, Glenn Beck, or attacking Mark Levin, you have no idea, and I don't have any idea, what the fuck is going on behind the scenes. It, I don't know how they fund their companies. I don't know who the owners are. It's very, very possible that whoever pulls those strings said, either this guy walks or your company's going down. It's, it's, look at what happened with Roseanne. Roseanne was extremely magnanimous because she said, I don't care what you do to me. Oh, you, oh, you're coming after, Paul, you're, 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 you're going to fucking get it. Uh, Roseanne said, I don't care what you do to me. I'm set for life. When you're canceling my show, you're firing my whole crew. So she, that was what allowed her to walk away from the show and have a reroute from the Connors because she was like, I, these people I care about, they, they have mortgages, they have families, I'm rich, but I, I can't put them out in the street. So to have everyone being like, this is Glenn's fault, this is Mark's fault, you don't know shit and I don't know shit. Because when you have someone who's being made this much into a pariah, and again, thank you. PewDiePie or T-Series. I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. Um, when you have someone who's been made successfully into this much of a pariah, uh, a lot of things, a lot of choices get taken out of your hands. Do you, does anyone really think... Remember how Bill, Bill O'Reilly... Let's give another example. Who is not being accused in any sense of being a skinhead or leader of a gang... Uh, towards the end of his reign at Fox, where he had the number one show in all of cable news for decades. It was like 10 years, something crazy. Um, uh, they went after the advertisers, which is the market at work in a sense, and he got unceremoniously kicked off of Fox. I don't, this was, and of course, there were all those sexual harassment settlements and so on and so forth, of course. The point is, it was not a simple decision like, uh, oh, I hate Bill, he's fired. When you are working for a company or running a company, it is a very, very tricky situation where you have things going on um, in uh, coming at you, both behind the scenes and publicly. So the, the, uh, we don't know what's happening. Uh, it could be Mark, it could be, or it could be Glenn, or uh, who the hell knows? It could be that he's hard to... Uh, this isn't true. I'm, I'm, for another situation. Not, let's not talk about Gavin. It could be when there's a merger, now you have an excuse to fire someone who you didn't like working with because he's difficult. She's difficult. So hold your breath. Uh, 
it's it's and it's also really unfortunate that if Gavin is being taken down by the left and the Southern Poverty Law Center, that Glenn Beck is your target. Who is putting the pressure on Glenn Beck to do this from your point of view? At a certain point, Glenn Beck has to worry about his staff who left Fox with him, many of them, who he takes care of, who are good people. So there's, there, I mean, think about who the villain is here. And it's, it's really easy to point, oh, okay, there's a, there's a tweet, hold on. Um, oh, it's confirmed. Okay, we have a confirmation. Thank you for whoever uh, DM that. Hold on a second. Um, I'm going to retweet this. Confirmed. Discussing this now on my stream. Uh, sorry, guys. I, this, this has not happened in a while, this kind of breaking news, and I'm kind of somewhat in the middle of it. Or tangential to it, to be fair. Okay. Um, okay, we got a question. Sorry. Donation for your excellent podcast. Thank you so much. It's appreciated. Uh, that's the other thing. Support your create. They just pulled Sargon. Sargon of Akkad, who calls himself a radical centrist, who gets hit really hard by the alt-right for being too moderate. Uh, they pulled him from Patreon. So, guys, it's very important. And... Part of this is self-serving, but it's really the truth. Um, it's very important that you support your creators. It's really... Uh, Laura Loomer has her PayPal. You have to put your money where your mouth is to some extent, if you can afford it. Because... I did not spell Gavin's name wrong, you fucking idiot. Here, you're getting, you're getting removed. Um, so, uh, yeah. So support your creators. If it's not me, these other people at Pimp Tool is great. He's got a Patreon. So, okay. So now you should support your fans and not mute them. Uh, actually, I disagree completely and I'm going to block you. Um, so I don't know what Subscribestar is. Okay. So uh, where, was my, where was I going with this as well? I had a, Okay. So Compound Media. Gavin was... Uh, Gavin was at Compound Media, where I am, before he left to CRTV. Uh, I don't know what subscribe there is. Um, at CRTV, uh, he had to tone it down a bit. He, whatever, I've been in a show and I cursed, and I had to catch myself and so on and so forth. Um, Okay, I, I can't read the comments. This is everything's going too fast. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm I apologize. I'm apologize. I can't multitask. I'm too alpha apparently. Um, Gavin used to host a show at Compound called Gavin McInnes Show. I think it was at 10:30 to noon or 11 to 12. He suggested to them, "Oh, thank you. Time for independent platforms." Yeah, yeah. This is. I mean, how many red flags do people need? Um. He suggested to Anthony Kumia, who runs the network, that I take over his show. Uh, and I, in a small way, I have. My show Nightshade is on at 11. Gavin's was on during the day. But I, I'm trying to fill the slot that Gavin did, which is like a half-hour recap show. His was an hour, an hour and a half. I don't know how he fucking did it. Um, uh, you know, to talk about the news of the day from the kind of point of view of free speech and the whole bigger new right milieu. So... Uh, I don't know if he would go back to Compound. Uh, I Anthony Cumia was on my um, show a few weeks ago. Let me give you guys the link, and you guys can see it for yourselves, where he discusses uh, if Gavin would be welcome back, and he says absolutely. Uh, let me get the link right here. Bear with me. Oh, we got 36,000 views on this. Okay. Um... Here you go. I'm just going to put in the comments. Interview with Anthony Kumia. Here we go. Uh, you're blocked too. Okay. So 
I don't know if he... So right now, th there's a different schedule at Compound. Um, you have In Hot Water in the morning. Oh, yeah, I changed the screen, the screen set. In Hot Water in the morning, which is Aaron Berg and Gina Bisconti, who are great, great guys. Then after that, you have Morning with Bill Schultz and Joanne Nosachinski, who are on at... Uh, I don't even know the schedule off the top of my head. Bear with me. I'll, I'll give you guys the exact schedule because this is Jermaine. So In Hot Water is from 9 to 10... And morning is 10.30 to 11.30. So if Gavin were to come back to, uh, it would, I don't know how that would work. So I have not talked to Gavin. I have not talked to uh, the people at Compound. I don't know what the situation is. Um, but that's where we stand as of this minute. Uh... So, yeah, um, I, here's the other thing I was talking to, um, In Hot Water is not pre-taped, I was on, on Monday. I was talking to people at, uh, Compound, whatever, a, a friend of mine, and just in general, I don't think you realize, I am so, again, one of the most important things Ayn Rand ever said, and I keep going back to Ayn Rand, because... She testified in front of the House on American Activities Committee. And this was, I think, the most pertinent... Oh, thank you, Rachel. It's very sweet of you. Um, she was testifying in front of the House on American Activities Committee. You know, she had escaped Lenin. She left Russia in 1926, Soviet Union 1926. Uh, and things got even worse after she left. And the congressman asked her, I don't, and, and, I don't understand. Don't people, like, go on picnics and visit their mother-in-laws? And she's like, it's impossible for someone who lives in a free country to understand what it's like. And she's like, and in a way, it's a good thing that it's impossible. So I am, again, coming, being born in the Soviet Union, raised with like Soviet parents and grandparents. Like my mentality, like a lot of times I'll hear Americans talk about this stuff and I'm just blown away. Because Kurt Schlichter, who was a guest on my show last night, uh, made the he always makes this point. These people want you dead. And if you don't think that that's literally true, which it's fair to say that might not literally be true, they do want you completely powerless and in silence. And I, I don't think that that's unusual. I think most people who are in control of a culture want opposition silence. It's a natural human need for domination, what Nietzsche called the will to power. Uh, coming to New York this week, looking forward to a live taping of Nightshade Thursday night. Um, I have plans that night. So, people who expect their enemies to treat them with magnanimity, why? Where the fuck do you, you have drank the Kool-Aid. Where's the Kool-Aid? You have drank the Kool-Aid that there's going to be this fair play and decency. It's not the case. That's not how it fucking works. People will take as much power and domination over you as they have the ability to do. So get that through your head. It's not like, okay, we got him kicked off of Instagram and Facebook. Well, he's learned his lesson. No, 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 no. It's like, okay, my friend, I've, I've made this point many times. My friend who used to run the cuddle parties, which sounds stupider than it is. She said, uh, people will take as much space as you give them. And it's, it's almost like physics, and I hate using science metaphors in, in culture, but I'll do it in this case. Uh, it's inertia. If you are going in this direction attacking a person, you're not stopping until there's a pushback. Why would you? You're winning. It feels good. It's never going it, 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 to... There, there's got to be some point, and the thing is, if they can get... If they're... Like, look, if we can get him... They got him kicked off of PayPal. They got him kicked off of fucking PayPal. So, of course, they're going to try to get him kicked off uh, uh, his, his shows. Frankly, I think it's a lot easier to get someone kicked off of Twitter than it is to get him kicked off of uh, a podcast network when you're a successful podcast. So, if they, you know, and it, or it's, I think it's harder, let me get that reversed, to get someone kicked off of PayPal than to get someone kicked off of a uh, network. So, um... That's where we are. Uh, let me just check my phone because it was blowing up. Okay. Uh, okay. 
And the other thing I uh, want to impart to everybody, and this is what would really drives me fucking crazy. Hold on, let me get my monster because I'm obviously not not wired enough. Man, this pre workout I took a few while, a while ago really works. I highly recommend it. Um, if you guys think Trump is gonna save you, you're out of your fucking minds. Like, I, 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 I don't know how to make that any clearer. Yeah, and I'm going to kick you out of this chat, too. That's right. Ah, uh, good times. That's easy to do. The pre-workout I use is called Ghost, and it's like taking MDMA. It's, it's fucking amazing. It's, uh, but that's a complete sidebar. So, you got to fight the zombie apocalypse, AR-15 or AK-47. I'm from Brooklyn. I don't know from guns. So if you could explain the difference between the two, I'll, I'll be glad to answer the question. I would think an AK, no, from what I uh, understand. Trump is not going to save you. Trump is, he, he doesn't have the capacity. Like literally, what could Trump do right now? He couldn't save the house. So the idea that he's going to come in and somehow force CRTV to have Gavin or force PayPal to allow like you know milo or pay have milo on patreon that's not the case they got rid of milo from patreon this week as i discussed on my show uh because they said because of your association with uh, a hate group in the past even though you've denounced it milo was not a proud boy what the the proud boys are like a frat organization it, it but but they had the, how things work me and mentious Mulbug had the exact same epiphany independently there's this great book by James Burnham, who was a former Trotskyite, and I talk about this in The New Right. It'll come out in May. And the reason I always say I talk about it in the book because I hate sounding repetitive. Um, how politics works is they will figure out what they want to do and find the justification for it after the fact. I'm pro-choice, but a great example of this is Roe v. Wade, meaning, all right, we think abortion should be legal. Let's just find some grounding on it to justify it. And this is what drives cons pro-life conservatives crazy. Like, this logic doesn't make sense. It makes sense if you're thinking about it in reverse, because that is how people logically come to their conclusions. Read, to jo read Jonathan Haidt. He discusses this at length. How people have their moral conclusion first, which is visceral, then they rationally find the justification for said conclusion. So if the conclusion has been reached that Gavin is running a national skinhead gang, then of course they're going to look for any justification to do what they can to him. And in fact, they would find it morally virtuous. So it's, it's uh, um, Machiavellians. Read the Machiavellians. That's the book. That is the book. So, and here's the other thing. It's going to get a lot worse. It's going to get a lot worse. Um, not worse, but... Here, but Here's okay. Now here's something else. Here's something else. When I was talking to Gavin the first time I was on his show, when I was in a bulk and looking really chubby, this was his show was called Free Speech. This is before it was even the Gavin McGinnis show on Compound, and we were talking about. He says things are worse than they've ever been, and the point I made is keep some perspective, and here's why. Back in the day. Back in the day, not that long ago, let's say 25 years ago, everyone who thought like Gavin, everyone would be vanished. Now they have to pick off people one by one. That is progress, although that's not good. And it's a big, big improvement to go from silencing and making invisible entire classes of people to trying to pick off ringleaders who you can name by name we could do you talk faster after each serving of taurine i think i'm just naturally i'm just wired now because the pre uh, i love height any other reading you would suggest i haven't read anti-fragile read jonathan height read um steven pinker's not the better age of our nation the other one um if someone can recommend it uh read thaddeus russell's a renegade history of the united states uh, the clo and uh, the closing of the Western mind and Arthur Herman's this was recommended to me by Gavin and he recommends it frequently um, uh, Arthur Herman's the idea of decline in Western history uh, um, not enlightenment now what's the other one I'm sorry let me look it up for you right now hold on a second 
Um, Steven, it's the long one that said that explains how we're all rational, not rational. Uh, da, 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 the blank slate, the blank slate. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Blank slate. Um, yeah. Okay. Those are my recommended. All right. We're not doing this. Okay. Now I can look at the comments a little bit. Whew. What's this say? Have you considered an email list as a means of contact if your stuff gets shut down? Uh, I hate being that guy. I might have to get to that point. So as of now, subscribe to my YouTube and my Twitter, I guess, is the best way. If the apocalypse happens, I'll drive on rescue with my guns. I'm worried he's going to I have some very small guns you can use. I do have very small hands, so that'd be perfect. Um, though, Gregory, it is appreciated. Go, I don't know if ghost is kosher. I don't keep kosher, uh, obviously. Whew. Um, let me see. Let me just check my email quick. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if I really have anything else to say. That was just kind of my visceral POV. I just ranted for half an hour straight. Well, it's good work if you can get it. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I haven't... I haven't heard anything about Cody in a long time. Let me check. Should I... T Your comments often seem very nihilistic. What should we do to be fighting this? People are saying Trump... These I'm not nihilistic at all. I'm extremely optimistic. Um, uh, why do you say nihilistic? I, I, what, what, what you're perceiving is nihilism. And I'm, I'm agitated, so I'm not trying to be, uh, aggressive toward you. What you're perceiving as nihilism is me begging people to appreciate the nature of the enemy. Because we're taught, and we see this in school, right? You have your point of view, I have my point of view, we have a debate, and then the debate ends and you shake hands or maybe think that this person is annoying. That's not how it works. This is not about debate. This is about power and domination. So when I am saying nihilistic, I go, realize that it's not that these people have a different point of view about marginal tax rates. They, they really have revel in destruction. So that's where that's coming from. Um, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Isaac, thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. The Maccabees. I don't think this had to do with just Glenn. It seems he liked Gavin. He was on his show not long ago, and Glenn defended Gavin about the New York thing. Something must have really changed. Yeah. I, I agree with you. That's that's the point I was making. I, I mean, it's... Re also, you mentioned Gavin being part of the network as recently as yesterday. This was sudden. It's... You know how... Here's the other thing. Everyone attacks Bill Crystal and, and Max Boot... And who's that other vermin from Utah? Um, Evan McMuffin. Everyone attacks them because they're like, go after the Republicans, they go after the right. And look at all these people whose first instinct when Gavin is fired to go after Glenn Beck. You know, Glenn Beck hasn't said shit. Why is your first instinct to go after Glenn? Even if Glenn hates Gavin, it's certainly possible he's like, I hate him, but he let him have a voice in my network. So it's really, just keep that in mind. Your first instinct shouldn't be go after your own. Now, going after CRTV, in a sense, makes sense because then you could be like, okay, I, was, I bought this network, the subscription for this show. This show is no longer here. I'm no longer interested and let them feel the pain that way. That's fair. But to go personally after Glenn, when you don't know he hasn't come out against Gavin at all, I think that's really unfair. Uh, and correlation is not... Uh, um, Again, this could be Michelle Malkin or something for all we fucking know. We don't know that. It could be that Michelle said choose and they said, fuck you, we're not doing ultimatums. Then she said, fuck you. And they're like, well, come back and we're getting rid of Gavin. We don't know this. We don't know any of this. So it's really, un if people who were for Kavanaugh who said, let's, uh, you know, let's have the evidence. Where's the evidence? So take a deep breath. The first reaction shouldn't be emotion and getting up pitchforks for Glenn Beck. I'm, I'm going to absolutely defend Glenn. I've been on his show several times. He is gotten... It is so fucking important. If you're comparing Gavin's career, which is something it's fair for people to be concerned about, with war, even Gavin would say this is not a question. Glenn has become a very strong voice of the anti-war right. And I know, if you watch his interviews, a lot of this is because of guilt 
because of what role he felt he played with the Iraq war. If you have someone who's on the right, whose audience may not be you, but maybe it's boomers or somebody, people who are more earnest than you, and that's fine. If you have someone who is fighting and legitimizing an anti-war stance in the right wing, he is a hero. So do not go after him. I mean, seriously, anyone who is fighting for peace and fighting for less people being killed is a good person. Uh, okay, that's where we are. I really thought Glenn was born a Mormon. I did not know that. So, yeah, that's where we are. Whew. Oof. I haven't had dinner. I'm staying on Patreon for now. If you want to support me, that's fine. If you don't want to, that's cool too. I do not expect any support, and I treasure every support I get. Um, it's, it's, I hope I try to give back value to the value that's been given to me. So, you know, thank you. I thank I'm I try to be as grateful as, as verbally as much as possible. Um whew. Okay. So tomorrow, by the way, I'm going to be at the um um hoax premiere in New York. So I will be there and you guys can all say hi. Um no eye contact, please. I, 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 that's a great point, Cronus. If you are just relying on Patreon, you, you have to be spread out. So I have my show on Compound. I have my show on Gas Digital. I have my Patreon, and I do my live streams. Uh, and I write my books. So, And I don't think I'm anywhere near as controversial as some of these other people. But who knows? Because it's not, again... G g there are people who are far more controversial and offensive than Gavin, but they've just got their hooks on him, so it's very easy to make him a... They're also, here's something else about Gavin. They Here's something else about Gavin. They have succeeded in making him a guinea pig. Okay, who's texting me? Yes, yes. Sorry, it's about tomorrow. It's about the hooks premiere. Yes, sir, I will be there at one okay sorry guys it's just this is my life um uh, i'm not naive my point being is that they're making gavin a guinea pig so it's like all right let's run this simulation through let's run this test case see what we get away with and then we're just going to replicate that plan to the next person so, yeah, that's where we are with that. Um, oh, man, I am amped. I am very, very, very amped. Uh, obviously, I'm very pro-crypto. I, I, you know what else? You know what? Since I called this, and here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Um, this is not, and I want to make this clear. A prediction is not something I want to have happen. A prediction is something I expect to have happen. Owen is probably the next target. And I'm shocked he's still on Instagram. Because, I mean, he's been going very hard. And there's been a lot of big names who have him in their sights. And that is very unfortunate. And Owen is being very smart about it. Owen is being very smart. Yeah, here you go. If you want to contribute here to oh yeah hold on I'll get to Cody in a second um hold on a second Owen is being very smart because Owen is touring and selling tickets and he gets asses in seats and so if he gets kicked off of one thing he still has and then he makes his specials and people pay for them so Owen is um. Again, not relying on one thing. Uh, um, 
I'm a criminal tax lawyer in the Bronx. I want run against Alexandra Casio Cortez in my district and IRS abuse. Loved your book, dear reader. Well, thank you. That's very, very nice. That's very nice. Um, I, 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 I am so against the idea that the government, and I'm going to talk about this Alan Bakari when he's on my show in a couple of weeks, that the government's what's going to save us. Because as, as soon as the government gets involved, they're going to have, now Twitter has an excuse to start banning people. Now uh, PayPal and YouTube have an excuse to ha- start banning people. Now they can say, well, the government's making us do it. We have these guidelines. We have to be fair. Fair means that which you don't like, which they like. So if you guys, the, the idea, I can't think of one fucking example ever when the government made it that there's more free speech of people who are attacking the government. Like, I, 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 I can't even wrap my head around this thinking. So, yeah. Oh, God, I'm eating my protein chips. Oh. And then what's going to happen? Okay, whatever, whatever. I'm good. Okay. Um, I'm starving, people. It's 9 o'clock. Uh, does anyone else have any questions or anything like that? I just wanted to do this quick because uh, I knew a lot of people wanted to hear what I had to say and I wanted to break the news. So and That's the other Someone, Thank you, uh, Murphy. Uh, I, I, Howlin' Mad Murphy. This is what I want you guys to get, you Americans. The FBI has made it clear, reported in the Washington Post, you know that minor publication, the Washington Post, do you have a Bitcoin address for donations? Uh, not at the, I, I do somewhere. Um, uh, thank you though. Um, I would love to have James Woods on my show. Anyway, uh, I'm having my protein chips for dinner. Fuck, what was I just talking about? Fuck, 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 fuck. Um... Wait, you just made... Oh, yeah. Okay, here it is. The FBI publicly said in the Washington Post, the Proud Boys are not an extremist hate group. Does... If you think this is going to matter to anyone, you're crazy. I'm just going to say crazy. And I don't like using that word, but it's crazy. Because, again, the idea is in the ether. It's in the zeitgeist. So now that they have it in their head that he runs a national hate group... Sure, the FBI didn't say it, but the SPLC said it. And they could say, well, it's not our opinion. Look, Southern Poverty Law Center said it. So we're being objective. We're just going, they're outsourcing. This is how corporations work. They outsource their uh, bad decisions. Because it's like when you have a company and you want to have layoffs, what do they do? They hire consultants. The consultants come in and they say, oh, we're firing all these people. It wasn't up to us. The consultants told us to do it, to, you know, right size, not downsize, right size of the company. And this is the same thing. PayPal, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. It's not us. Southern Poverty Law Center said it. They're an objective organization that just wants good free speech that's not toxic. And they only have America's views in mind. So that's what we're going to do. So that's exact. And the FBI is secondary. So... The idea that you can kind of point people and be like, look, the FBI doesn't care. They don't fucking care. Why would they care? They're not looking for excuses to redeem him. They're looking for excuses to hurt him. Don't you get it? Well, you do get it. I'm sure some of you do. <sighs> okay. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a deep breath. I'm going to take a deep breath and have some chips. All right. Um, uh, I'm just going to check one thing quick. Bear with me. Okay. Deep breath, another protein chip. Thank you. I will do so. Ducting me. Okay. Uh, thanks, deep discount. All right. I, what else do we, can we? Does anyone have any questions? What can we chat about?
I don't I don't know what that means. Morrissey's clearly overrated. This is not even a you gotta shut up about rubber rodeo, getting my nerves. It sounds like nihilism, people don't hear solutions, and then solutions are solutions getting bad. What are your solutions? That's not what nihilism means. You're thinking of nihilism doesn't mean hopelessness. My solution is okay, I'll give you solutions. There is a phenomenal book called that I read in college, which I didn't appreciate at the time, called The Goal. And the goal is the premise of this book, and a lot of these um, business books can be summed up in like a chapter. It's kind of like economics in one lesson, and I've talked about this before. The author makes the point, he asks the question, what is the goal of a business? Why do people create a business to begin with? Is it to be popular? Is it to create jobs? No. The point of a business is to make money. Therefore, he goes on, what furthers the goal is good, and what uh, hurts the goal is bad. And he breaks it down in this way. Let's, let's talk about production, right? Let's suppose I'm making a monster. I have to ferment the monster cum. Uh, you're getting blocked. You're, you're, I told you you're in my last nerve. Um, you have to make the bottles. You have to print the bottles. You have to bottle it. You have to distribute it. There's all these steps. And what he says is, the author, and I wish I could l get off the top of my head, or look up, know his name off the top of my head, but it's been 20 years. The author goes, how to make a, the further the goal is you look at bottlenecks. What in this process, and says he'd have Gavin Gap in a flash, do you think he would ever come back to Compound Media? I don't know if Gavin would come back. I know Gavin is very rattled by what's being done to him because it's being done to people who are fans of his. And that's got to fuck with his head. Eliyahu Goldrat, thank you. Oh, Jesus Christ, that sounds like the villain in 1984. And he goes, what are the bottlenecks? Which is keeping my production from increasing? Maybe it's the, the labeling. So you put your energy towards labeling and make the labeling cheaper or faster. But then... There's something else. Okay, now it's, uh, I don't have enough trucks to distribute the monster. Buy more trucks. At every step, there is going to be a bottleneck that is keeping you from achieving your goal of making more money, right? Okay. This is the exact same thing that is happening with, with you want to talk solutions, I'm giving you solutions, that is happening with uh, social media and discussing your uh, subscribe stars Patreon or Turlip. Thank you, Deswu. What happens is, okay, people realized having four networks, ABC News, NBC, CBS, Fox, uh, not Fox News, Fox, was a problem. Let's make more networks. Then they made, effectively, infinite networks. Everyone could have a social media account. Then they're like, all right, we're going to pull back here. So then people created alternatives to that. So at every step of the way, and people say, oh, they laughed at you. They go, oh, just make your own Patreon. Ha ha. You don't personally have to make your own Patreon. All that happens is one person has to realize that this is a market opportunity. And that one person has to create the alternative to Patreon. And it's, look at Friendster. Look at MySpace. The idea that Facebook is something that we can't all live without is false. It's absolutely false. And that's a great question because now the issue with the bottleneck is the credit card companies. This is a new one. No, it used to be, well, 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it would have been, well, make your own website. Now it's like, okay, it'll take me literally five minutes. And now it's like, okay, make your own Patreon. Yeah, we're at the point where someone has to create an alternative to Patreon or to Visa and MasterCard. But the point is, this is how the process works. At every step of the way, there is going to be a bottleneck where it's fucking shit up for everyone. And it's going to take that one entrepreneur to identify it and then solve for it. And right away, the issue is solved and there's going to be a new issue. And it gets better and better incrementally every single time. And here's another example, Napster. It was all in Napster and all the file sharing was in Napster. And they closed down Napster. 
and you they want you to buy CDs. Now literally no one buys CDs. And there, Pirate Bay has how many mirrors? 30? And then there's other non-Pirate Bay torrent sites. And then there's sites like Release BB where you just download the file directly. So that is how this process is going to work and is going to be solved. Uh, and absolutely I agree that we need alternative methods of payment that are clean. And that I'm sure is what people are working on right now. Okay. The real tragedy of this is that conservatives are becoming statist. Becoming? Conservatives have always been statist. They have always been statist. Bill, uh, Bill Buckley, who's the villain of my book, made the point that we need authoritarianism in our shores to fight the Soviet Union. Fuck you. Sorry, is this loud if I'm crunching? I'm sorry. I'm just very hungry. What's that spoon mean? It's getting annoying. Okay. Yeah. My thing about the Soviet Union, I talk about this in my chapter about Jared Taylor. Um, and it's gonna, it'll come out in um, May. I can't wait for this book now. Oh, thank you. Okay. Huh. <sighs> Mm. Oh. Okay, so nobody else has anything to say. Okay, this spoon thing is getting on my nerves. I don't like the tick. If that's, I know that's not what it is. So you're getting. Done. Whew. The spoon, you know what the spoon is? It's banned. <sighs> oh, I like sticks. Okay, so I shouldn't have banned him. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I do like the tick. I just hate the tick as a character. Yeah, Molin, you, Michael. I'm not having a heart attack. This is just, I'm a hummingbird baby. A friend of mine refused to buy Dear Reader because you're an ANCAP. I'm not an ANCAP. I'm an anarchist. Uh, your friend's an asshole, because and you could quote me on that because it doesn't matter what political persuasion you are. Everyone in I I. I Literally 99.999% of the population in America agrees that North Korea needs more uh, economic freedom and more social freedom. There is no disagreement there. So if your friend thinks, dear reader, which is about the plight of North Korean people, is some kind of crypto Rothbard manifesto, I don't want them reading my book. There is a complete consensus that... These people need liberation, peaceful liberation. And I'm not even advocating anarchism for North Korea. If they have to become Sweden, that's a, it'd be the greatest thing that's happened. And I'd be crying with happiness. Hmm. Good Lord. Okay. Um, what's your opinion of the Yellow Jacket protest? I have not been following. I'm going to cover that on Monday on Nightshade. Thank you. Anarchist, not ANCAP. Can you please explain why? Sure. I haven't read that much Rothbard. Uh, I think a lot of ANCAPs are assholes. 
and I consider myself an anarchist without adjectives. So I, I am much more comfortable advocating for anarchism than I am for capitalism. So if someone's an ANCOM and they think under anarchism everyone would be equal, fine. As long as you are for peace and you hate the state. Thanks, James. That's very sweet. Thank you. As an ANCAP, how can I be less of an asshole? Uh, don't be smugly sarcastic with people you expect to have any kind of discussion with in the future. And do your best to empathize. Not sympathize. Empathize with other people's point of view. Never seen an ANCAP who hates the state? Emma Goldman. So that's where we are. Okay. Whew. Mm. Oh God. Sorry. Mm. Hold on a second. Okay. Thank you for the support. Um, oh God, I got all these notifications. Fuck, my Twitter's blowing up. Um, sorry. Okay, it's off the list. Who's, who's, oh God, I got all these stupid followers. Bear with me, guys, sorry. I'm just trying to, you know, push the data out as it's coming in. Who's unhinged? Ugh, so many people are annoying. Um, okay. Bring Gavin home. Well played. All right. What shit depot did I just step into? I don't fucking know. You're annoying. God, it's really fun blocking people on Twitter. I have to thank Cernovich for giving me the permission to do that and, and being like, no, no, it's better for you and your and your followers. Um, if you can't super chat, you can just go to streamlabs.com here. Here you go. You could just do it here. Uh. Yeah, big A ate my chips once, that's true. Yeah, I changed the latency, Chris, so that cuz yesterday was dropping, so thank you. Fuck your mom. How about that? Who's your favorite lefty? Um, today or all time? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Camus. That's easy. It's Camus. Camus is by far my favorite lefty. Oh, or Inez a bit. My favorite writer. She's a lefty. She's a she was um Fabian. Thank you, Roderick. Who's Roderick? My favorite lefty is uh, Mises. <laughs> Ayn Rand's my favorite lefty. 
Uh, oh, Broderick. Okay, yeah, yeah, Juanita. I'm reading Max Eastman's Reflections on the F Failure of Socialism. I don't have... I've never heard of that book. Max Eastman sounds like a villain. Hold on, let me look him up. Uh, I have not read that book. I can tell you that. Um... Oh, he see. Oh, wait, wait. If he, he was for the. Oh no, no. I know him. I'm reading a book right now of Alan, um, Alan Locke about the Harlem Renaissance. So I don't know that much about Eastman, but if he was involved in the Harlem Renaissance, he's got to be an interesting figure. Uh, but tweet at me when you finish the book and let me know what you think. Hmm. Okay. Um, do you think no one's going after why do you think no one's gone after you at, when you're alt-right adjacent uh, that's a good question I think because I don't know here, you, here okay you know why here's why it's not like people are being attacked for legitimate reasons don't you get it Gavin has been made to be the head of a national skinhead gang that is not accurate, nor is Gavin at all the most provocative or extreme in his views. It's not how it works when the eye of Sauron hits on you. It's like a, play, a wheel of misfortune. So I've just been lucky in many ways. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Hatav. Can you expand on Bill Buckley? Yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of it in the book. It's a long story. When Once you've written Anarch, whatever comes after is meaningless. Free people will do what they will do, and you have abdicated the power to stop it. Yep, yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Thank you. Yep, yeah, exactly. Sorry again. I feel it's obnoxious. But I'm starving. Mm. Oh, hold on. Someone sent a stream lab? Thank you to Henry. Okay, and now let me check Streamlabs. Thank you, Henry. I got that. Yes, thank you, Henry. Okay. I think your solution is outside of the ability of the common man. They turn to Trump. Well, that's you saying starting another Patreon is outside of most people's ability. I agree 100%. The point is only one person has to do it. Only one person had to invent the car. So when you say someone make your own website, what was absurd 25 years ago is not absurd now, not because that person learned HTML, but because someone made it so that HTML is something anyone can do. All right. Oh, sorry. I clicked the wrong thing. Ooh. The left-right spectrum. Okay. There's several ways to look at this. One is hierarchy versus egalitarianism. Another way is um, uh Empathy with the powerful or sympathy for the weak. A third way is openness to change versus closed-mindedness. And I'm not using that word in a pejorative sense. And another way is being for the outsider and the marginalized or being for your own group. Each of those has pluses and minuses. So the idea that left means statism and right means anarchism is crazy. Because that means that anarcho-capitalists and anarcho-communists have no difference between them, which is rid ridiculous. Yeah, Cody Wilson was on my show. He discussed Hatreon. Um, I have no idea what's going on with him recently. I oh, and the other thing is um, uh, plastic uh, human nature. Is it immutable 
or is it plasticine? That's another left-right axis that people use. And these are all different axes that people use. Um, uh, and that's why there's all these arguments. And that's why you have people pretending that Hitler's on the left. Favoring the outsider, it, you think favoring the outsider is wrong? I genuinely, genuinely hope you and all the, everyone else here never gets arrested. Because that is when you realize how important it is to have some favorability for the outsider. When you are in that position, when you are powerless. there's that. I just read this book where the joke is a conservative is a liberal who's been mugged and a liberal is a conservative who's been arrested. I did like calling her Miss Juanita, I'm not going to lie. <sighs> okay, guys, um, I got a message. Hold on. Okay. Do you have a solution for the common person? Because I would like to be able to help, but I feel powerless in my ability to change things. Yes, I do. Um, the grid is better than the line for the spectrum. If you feel powerless to change things, you don't have to change them in the Washington level. You can change them in your neighborhood. You can talk to an old person who's lonely, or you can mentor a, an orphan, or you can walk a stray dog. There's so many things you can do to make, and self-improvement. If you're a better person, you're going to attract people who think who will look up to you, and then you'll, you'll be able to persuade them that way. You have so much power to affect change, and that if you're not, the, the idea that if you're not the president, you can't affect change is, is crazy. That's how to do it. Okay, next question. The grid is better than the line for the spectrum. Well, if we're dealing with anarchists, it's going to be on the spectrum. Do social contracts exist in a free society? Social contracts don't exist in any society. Whew. I have not read uh, Jordan Peterson's. I don't feel like I'm the target audience at all. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Christine. That's very sweet of you. Where can you buy the Machiavellians? I, I remember you saying there are bootleg copies available. I think I just retweeted someone. Hold on. I'll retweet it right now. Go to my Twitter. Um, there's bootleg. There's, you can download it for free. Hold on a second. Bear with me. Here it is. I just retweeted it from Eggroid. Thank you, Eggroid. So you can just go to my Twitter right now. It's at the very top. <sighs> 12 rules for eating chips and lunch. Yeah. No, that's stupid. The only law that matters is the common law. No, I don't agree with that at all. Well, it matters in terms of practicality because that's what's imposed on you. I got some good bottles today for the arduous march in, in um, February 1st. We're, we're all funded on that. <sighs> okay, I'm calming down. <laughs> I did have a good workout today, I'm not going to lie. Even though some asshole was holding on to that 50-pound easy bar from Deal Life for like 30 sets. Oof.
I work with junkies and alcoholics, so what you just said really resonates. Seeing how they are treated by society every day does something to you. Yeah. Yeah, and let's pretend. Well, let's assume. Let's, 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 I don't have to pretend. Let's assume 90% of them are worthless and garbage. 90% of most people are worthless and garbage. I'm half joking. 10% of a population can, that could be made into like good neighbors and, and productive workers. I mean, it's wonderful. Where can we buy signed Dear Readers? And I'm not, I'm an elitist. I'm all for throwing people in the trash, but give it, you know, it, j that's not the reason to do it for signed copies. Why don't social contracts exist? Because I didn't sign shit. A contract, you, you can't, it, you know, that's like saying you and I are in a family. Well, how? Well, socially we are. What does that mean? Social con a social contract is a way, it, quite literally, is a way of, pre is, the term begging the question is often misused. What begging the question means is trying to, is, is assuming that which you are trying to prove, right? A social contract, a contract means consent of both parties or multiple parties to a course of action. That's what you have to prove vis-a-vis -vis the legitimacy of government. So saying social contract, oh, uh, I'm sitting here, I'm telling you loud and clear to your face, I didn't agree, I don't consent, I don't agree, there's no contract. You're like, oh, it's a social contract. So it works nothing like any contract ever, and somehow you have agreed because you are between two oceans, and even though you're yelling at me to your blue in the face that you don't agree, I've decided you agree. That's why social, have you ever seen one? What are the stipulations of it? And every contract has an exit. Every contract says, I will write this book. If I don't write it, I have to pay back the money. Or I'm going to build you a house. If I don't build it, I'm... What, where's the escape clause in the social contract? Michael won't comment on Joe. I know he has seen it. Fuck you. I comment on what I want to comment, and I haven't seen what you're asking. There's, these things are going quickly. <sighs> yeah, it's 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 really funny to me when, when I'm, like, making... <sighs> Whatever, it's not funny at all. I, how do I sell the chat? I didn't know I can. Yeah, we have a social contract that hate speech is unacceptable. Exactly. That's a great point. Michael Humer wrote the book that I wanted to write, which is uh, the Argument Against Political Authority, I think it's called. Great, great book. The best founding father is obviously Alexander Hamilton. Okay, I think I'm going to... Whew. I just shat myself. Uh, I'm just going to check if people did through the Streamlabs. Uh, no. Okay. Oh, Henry. Sent some, Henry, you have another question? Well, thank you, Henry. That's very nice. Thank you for all the... Uh, okay. Have you played Bioshock? I have not. I'm not a gamer. I'm too old, I think. I can't handle how the screen moves. There's a conspiracy that Joe Rogan is a deep plant and want you to shit on your chances to go on his show for this amusement. But I've been on his show twice. What the fuck does that even mean? Why? I don't... I, I, I'm sorry. I don't follow. I'm not trolling with the Hamilton shit. He's the greatest man who ever lived. He invented America. Single-handedly by outsmarting everyone. Oof. Yes, read um, Chernow, and that's all you need to know. The Chernow book on Hamilton, and you're set. The Problem of Political Authority by Humor. Thank you very much, Apple. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I know Bioshock's based on Ayn Rand. I'm going to watch a playthrough 
Would that do it for me? I, I, I've watched playthroughs of games that I enjoy, and it's really fun just watching, like, Super Smash Brothers. I watch a six-hour playthrough. Okay, thank you. You weren't being rude. I didn't, uh, James, I didn't consider you rude in the slightest. Uh, you're going in timeout. We're not going to have Hamilton bashing on my stream. I don't know what this means for Gavin. At all. At all. Okay. Uh, um, I think that... Six hour playthrough, which one, Melee Brawl? I watched the one where the, it's a story, Hunter, where they, they go through the whole story and they're on a different island and there's different parts. Okay, you're getting a timeout. Oh, you got timeout already. Too bad. Uh, who is your favorite wasp? Ooh. Fuck, that's a good question. Is James Burnham? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. I think that's everything. I will... Uh, should I leave this up or should I lock this for my Patreons? What do you guys think? I'll leave it up to you guys. Lock it. Bitcoin unlock. Leave it up. Leave it. Okay. Thanks for what you're doing. Thank you, Tom. I am a tyrant when it comes to my own shit. I'm sorry I'm late. What happened to Gavin? <laughs> yeah, please leave it up. I missed the first 15 minutes. Okay, I will. I mean, you could have just subscribed to the Patreon for less than that, but that's okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Fine, I will, I will leave it up. Um, I will... Um, Go eat dinner now. Thank you for the support, and I'll keep you all updated. Wait, can I get a book about how the masses are the greatest threat to liberty? They're not! The masses are irrelevant. They have no, that's like saying uh, um, uh, they have no mind. They're, they're completely irrelevant. Read the Machiavellians. That will knock that sense out of you. Okay, closing this, closing this, just checking my 
inboxes. Okay. 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 All right, guys, I will uh, um, see you all soon. Count Zankula on Tuesday on your welcome, which is going to be really fun. And thanks for all the support. It's It really is appreciated. It, it gives me security.